Hello and welcome to this week's episode of SEO Lunch, your look at the latest and greatest in inbound marketing, tips, search engine optimization tricks, and other elements to improve your WordPress website. As always, I'm your host, Dan, and today we're going to throw it around a little bit. We're going to do a screencast. Um, and today's screencast is actually pretty special. Uh, we spend a lot of time going over both the technical and organic ways to improve your website. But what we haven't really discussed is how you determine what to fix. For fun, I should say, we're going to use WordPress.org as, as an example website, or we're going to test this website using a couple of different uh, options that you have out there to find out what is going on with your website and to test the performance. So we've already run the tests, um, but we're going to use GT Metrics and webpagetest.com. And we'll talk about the differences between the two and how you can improve your site and, and things like that as well. So the first thing we did was we ran a test with GT Metrics. And just to prove to you that there is always room for improvement on SEO, we can tell you that even WordPress.org, even the main website, the main landing page for WordPress is getting Bs. It's not getting A's. Um, and we'll go over a little bit why in a, in a moment here. So you're gonna notice that there are two letter grades. There's a page speed grade and a Y slow grade. The way I like to look at it, page speed grade is more of a technical look and Y slow grade is more of a, it's still technical, but it's more general suggestions to improve the website that are a little bit less technical. You'll also notice on the right that it's gonna tell you a few pieces of information. Uh, the entire page load time is 3.31 seconds. It's a pretty decent load time. You want your load time to be anywhere from two to four seconds typically, unless there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on videos things of that nature the page size is at a really really good level 661 kilobytes total and there were a few requests so it's doing pretty well there <clears throat> so let's kind of understand what's going on here and and go over some of the the common issues that you're going to have the number one here the number one issue and what will most likely be the number one issue for most websites is optimizing your images our article uh, that we'll link in the notes does go over this a bit more uh, as far as what your image size should be how you can optimize your images but uh, that's usually the big one just making sure that the images loaded are smaller 72 pixels or dpi resolution as opposed to the standard 300. this goes in line with serve scaled images as well the other one you'll see here commonly is enabling gzip compression now there are a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, you can do that using a combination of Mac CDN and W3 Total Cache plugins. That's one way to do it using WordPress standards. And again, we have an article for that. I don't want to spend a lot of time on each individual subject here, but we do talk about that. Additionally, there's also some code that you can enter into your site to also enable GZIP compression, GZIP compression excuse me, uh, on your FTP or on your server. If you're not comfortable going through your server and adding this code, we recommend talking to your host before you do so. While WordPress.org does have a good grade for leveraging browser caching, this is also one that you'll typically see needs to be adjusted. And this just means that you wanna cache your pages or have it load static content. So if I visit your page 100 times, I don't have to load the same image 100 times. My browser actually, whether it be Chrome or Internet Explorer or whatever it might be, actually remembers that image um, and is cached in the system. So if I reference the site again, and, I, and you have a logo that's the same on every single web page on your site, that logo will load the same every time. You don't have to worry about loading it every time. You'll also see minifying CSS and JavaScript requests technically, uh, typically. And what that is, is that's a lot more technical, but that's basically um, taking processes that are there um, and basically compressing them. So basically making sure that there, 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 aren't, there isn't as much code involved in that process. And there are also tools out there that you can use to minify CSS and JavaScript. Moving on to why slow, um, which is an open source project, you're going to see a, a few other solutions. Once again, the two biggest factors here are usually going to be at expires headers and using a contact delivery network. Here is no exception. Expires headers are again technical uh, and it's something you can actually set up with your W3 total cache install. Content delivery networks get a little bit trickier. We have full articles and resources on contact delivery networks, videos, things of that nature. But in all, in all essence, content delivery network takes content, whether it be images, text, header files, things like that, from your website and from your local server and distributes them throughout the world on a, a content delivery network's external servers. Making fewer HTTP requests is also one that's typically on this uh, as well. And what that's going to be is if you have any external um, things like uh, Twitter feeds and Facebook feeds, iframes, prezies, different embeds that are YouTube videos that are that are coming from your website. Um, those are requests that you want to kind of maximize or make sure that you don't have too many on one page because that will affect your load speed. And all joking aside, actually having two Bs is actually a really good score. If you have that, you're, you're on the right track. We can share that Slocum Themes, our own website, uh, runs an A and a C. The next time, the next one we're using is web page 
webpagetest.org. Forgive me earlier, I said web, webpagetest.com. And what webpagetest.org, this is the really technical look. So I don't wanna spend a bunch of time here because if you're looking at this um, and you're watching our video series, chances are good you may not be comfortable and super familiar with this. Uh, but just a couple of things that it does tell you, um, which are really, really helpful. The first byte time is really cool. That's the first request. You know, when is that time after the initial server requests and things? When does your content actually start loading? And then it goes through and you can actually click on your views and you can see just what your page load speed looks like and what's taking up time and when in the process each thing is firing off. For example, Google Fonts are loaded about 0.6 seconds into loading your web page and they take about 0.2 seconds to, to complete or 193 milliseconds to be exact. Page speed information is almost always going to be listed in milliseconds. Um, as our optimization article will tell you, you want to be at about a 100 milliseconds or less before your page starts loading. And you'll notice here that it's a little bit beyond that. So the first load speed is right there. It's a little bit above that. Finally, if you're looking for a more WordPress centric solution for a more WordPress centric problem with optimizing your web page, we have the P3 plugin performance profile. This is a very popular plugin. Um, it's actually created by the team behind GoDaddy, so we hesitate to recommend it. Um, but it is a really neat plugin to use um, as long as you're only using it to grade your plugins and then deactivating it off your site. This will tell you how many plugins we have active and we'll note here, we're just using a, this is just like a, a junk test site that we have this loaded on, but it'll tell us how many plugins we have, 23, quite a few plugins here, obviously. Um, how long it's actually taking uh, for your plugins to load. So this is 1500 milliseconds um, to load all of the plugins, which is quite a long amount of time. The amount of impact that the plugins have over everything else on load speed, obviously a huge number here. Again, junk site. And how many queries it's making to your database. This also goes in and tells you which plugins are taking up more time than others to run. It gives you that breakdown so you can better optimize the plugins that you have. So that's a look at how to test your website uh, for WordPress standards and start moving from there. We have tons of resources, both in video form here on our YouTube channel, as well as on our website at slocumthemes.com slash blog that go over how to optimize your websites. Uh, we started creating these right around the beginning of 2015 for reference. This, uh, this show is brought to you by our Slocum Themes, the best, cleanest, most responsive themes on the market. Check them out. Check out our modern business theme, our capture theme for budding photographers, and more. As always, subscribe to us, folks. We're looking to hit 10,000 subscribers, so you can click the subscribe button at the top right of this video if you like what you see. Comment below on YouTube and comment on our blog posts on our website as well. Thank you very much.